<laughs> well done. Hello, how are you going? What day is it today? <laughs> Does anyone know? Thursday, fantastic. Thursday, the 25th of January. Fantastic. Well, how good. This is Australia Day Eve. Australia Day Eve. Uh, tomorrow, many of us will celebrate Australia Day. Uh, there'll be a few that won't, including Woolworths shareholders, <laughs> probably, as they mourn the heavy losses that will be inflicted through their lack of joining many people that will celebrate Australia Day. <laughs> but I'm doing 14 days straight of encouragement from God's word and mainly centered around the topic of prayer and fasting. And for today, hey, Julie. And for today, I just want to read. Here's my daughter, Adonica, kind of joining me a little bit. Thank you. Awesome. I just want to read from 1 Timothy chapter 2. It says, Therefore, I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable peaceable life in all godliness and reverence for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth so I thought on Australia Day Eve how appropriate to encourage you to pray for Australia and to pray for those that are in authority in the government of Australia uh, it's always good, regardless of our political persuasion, to pray for those that are in political authority. You remember when James was put to death by the sword and um, they there was political things happening? The church didn't appear to be praying. Then Peter was arrested and when the politician saw, hey, Karen, saw that it Hey, Sue, saw that it really, the politicians saw that it really pleased the people that they had James killed, so they arrested Peter as well. But then the difference was the church, it's noted in the book of Acts that the church prayed. And what happened? An angel came and busted him out. And they were the first automatic doors that opened unto themselves. Um, so, you know, it's a good thing. That can be the difference. And this verse says that pray for, I exhort first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. So there's a connection between praying for those in authority and that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. Why is that? What is that connection? Well, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. And so there's a concept here that when we're, when we're praying that the people in authority will be godly and they're godly, the righteous rejoice. It's it's a very different nation to live in when there are people that are righteous in power. It's a more favorable time in which the gospel can go forth in that nation. It's a more favorable environment that funds to fund the gospel throughout that nation and be distributed to other nations to fund missions and that kind of thing can flow freely. That is a peaceable time. Hello, Di Willardson. That, that is a more peaceable time. Now, regardless, we'll preach the gospel, but there's times that are more favorable than others. There's times where it's going to be a more peaceable time to do it. And so I'm, I'm getting this from 
if you look at Second Peter 4, it says, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. If you look at the Amplified, it says, preach the word as an official messenger, be ready when the time is right and even when it is not. Keep your sense of urgency whether the opportunity seems favorable or unfavorable, whether convenient or inconvenient, whether welcome or unwelcome. So you can see that there's times when the preaching of the gospel is favorable, when it's a favorable time to preach the gospel. Example, Billy Graham, when the USA wanted to guard itself against the communistic ideas that were coming out of Russia and it was Cold War, threat of it turning into not a Cold War, and all of these things were happening, it was a great time for the government to promote Billy Graham because they wanted the people of the United States to believe in God, to guard against the Russian communistic kind of influence in the nation. That was a favorable time to preach the gospel. What's not a favorable time? Well, it's become a less favorable time in Australia. And so I think that it's high time that we pray for those that are in authority over us that we may lead a peaceable life, that our children would still be able to bring the message of peace, bring, hey, Tina, bring the message of the gospel and have it go forth unhindered by that political correct spirit that wants to destroy the preaching of the gospel and censor it and um, corral it and make it just a form of godliness without any power and basically have it be a pawn of the government to be able to distribute socks and socks and shoes and jumpers to the poor, but have it be just no preaching on hell, no preaching on eternal judgment, no preaching on Jesus. In fact, we'll give you money as long as there's no preaching. I have actually been to a, you think I'm kidding. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, those of you that <laughs> live in Australia know what I'm talking about. The enemy wants the one thing that's going to set people free. He wants to stop that. And I'm all for handing out socks. I'm all for giving out jumpers when it's cold. And I believe we should look after the poor. But I also believe that we should tell people about Jesus, that whether the time's favorable or not, whether it's going to invite persecution or be met with a great welcome, regardless, regardless or irregardless. I don't know what the difference is between those words, but we should preach the gospel anyway. We should keep our sense of urgency, whether the opportunity seems favorable or unfavorable, whether convenient, inconvenient, whether welcome or unwelcome. So this is part of the reason why we pray for those in authority, that we would lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness, because those that want to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. and. I tell you what, praying for those that are in authority, that they would cause the laws to line up more with godliness is a good thing because then the side of the law isn't against godliness. The side of the laws comes in line with what the scriptures say is right. When the scriptures and the law depart from each other, then you know that that nation is going to be in for a rough time because there's going to be those that obey God rather than men and it's going to bring a terrible time for those that are in authority and it's going to be a, a difficult time for the whole nation. It'll The nation will collapse before the Bible collapses. The Bible is, is uncollapsible. The word of God, the grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord stands forever. So for the sake of our nation, for the sake of the people in it, I, I don't 
I would like to see those in authority make laws that are in line with this book for the good of everyone that's living in it so that the time and the opportunity for people to receive Christ and be saved would be extended, that it would be a favorable time to bring the message of the gospel and to be able to sow freely into the gospel all, all over the world, to be able to politically, to be able to stand with Israel openly without fear of that you're going to get your house egged and banned from you know, <laughs> the sports club, <laughs> I don't know, but we want to be able to just live a godly life and have the government be um, godly as well, that we would rejoice because our prayers have been answered. Peter's been released from prison and he's still out preaching the gospel rather than have James be put to death by the sword. We actually, we don't need people to be put to death that are preaching the gospel. I like them to be able to minister the gospel freely. I think that's a better idea, don't you? Tina, with the bold Israel flag and the love heart in the comment. Well done. We absolutely do stand with Israel. God bless Israel this Australia Day. Oh, so good. That's right. So I want to encourage you and why don't we just spend a few moments out of these 14 days. I actually forget what day it is that we're up to. <laughs> but come on, we're, we're snowballing Israel support. You know, in um, we had the third day of um, Breakthrough Bible Institute today. How good has it been? Sasha and others that might be watching, I know Sasha regularly tunes into the broadcast, but it's been awesome. And one of those subjects is very Israel heavy. And just reading about how, you know, God says that I will bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you. It is amazing when you just peruse over history. Look at the nation that has blessed Israel more than any other nation in the last few hundred years. And it's the United States. The, and look at what has been, at least I know that it's going through a rough time at the moment, um, but over the last hundred, few hundred years, the nation that has been so blessed is the United States. The nations that curse Israel, they've got problems. Um, they've got difficulties. And my goodness, I don't want that to happen to Australia, so God bless Israel. <laughs> Plus, you just... It's hard to be a believer and, and not like Israel. I don't understand how, not that that means you hate other people that live in Israel, <laughs> whatever they may call themselves. I mean, you just love people, but there's just something about going to the place where Jesus lived and walked and seeing the Jew, Jewish people and their religion. There's some, something about it. And um, we have a special affection towards them without apology. So let's pray right now. Father, thank you for those in authority politically in Australia. We pray that they would bless Israel. We pray that they would be godly in the laws that they make more and more. We pray that we have reason to rejoice because the godly get into power here in this nation of Australia. Right on Australia Day Eve, we pray for our nation. Lord, have your way in this nation. Cause the gospel to be freely preached here continuously and cause a great support financially to rise up in Australia for the ministry of your word to go throughout all of the islands, all of all of the areas round about Australia and even to back to Israel because I feel like we're, we're right on the ends of the earth right here in Australia. Thank you that the gospel's come to this nation. Thank you for everybody watching. I pray that they'd be greatly encouraged during these broadcasts and this time of fasting. Bless them 
If they don't know you as their Lord and Savior, Lord, let them come to know you now. If you don't know Jesus, if you don't know where you would spend eternity, if you were to die tonight, put your bed, put your head on your bed, on your pillow, and you were to die and you don't know that you'd be with the Lord, then something simple you can do is just pray a prayer that opens yourself up to God making himself real to you. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So why don't you say this right now? If you don't know the Lord or if you want to lead someone else in a similar prayer, it's good to remember how to lead someone to Christ. Dear God, I've heard about you. And if you really sent Jesus to die for me, then I want to say thank you and receive you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One of the best prayers someone could ever pray to just say thank you to God for, for sending Jesus. That's, that's where it all starts. It's the seed of God's word just gets down in people's hearts and in their life. And when it finds good soil, it'll grow up and become a great tree. And I tell you what, the seed of God's word is powerful. And man, we are just having such the, the best time at, at Bible College, just planting, planting, planting more of the seed of God's word and just sensing it going into people's lives and believing that it's going to grow up and produce an incredible harvest, a fruitful harvest. Well, fantastic. Great to see you again. Hey, let's this Sunday. This Sunday, why don't you why don't you head down to Coles? Why don't you head down to Coles tomorrow, in fact, not Woolworths? Or if you do head down to Woolworths, why don't you grab go down to Coles first and purchase a few gift cards from Coles and then head down to Woolworths, stand out the front of Woolworths and encourage people by giving them a gift card saying, Hey, if you go down to Coles instead of Woolworths, I'll give you this gift card. <laughs> and then Go down to um, Coles and buy some Australia Day paraphernalia and, and, um, and bring it to um, Breakthrough Centre at 15 Blake Street, Wilsonton, and come and celebrate with us. We're, we're going to pray for Australia um, Sunday at 10 a.m., and it's going to be an Australian Day special. So why don't you bring some <laughs> Australian Day food with you and. Um, We'll have a time of celebration after the meeting and it'll be, yeah, a time. That's not a, oh, I thought it was a mask emoji, which is like the worst emoji you could do, but it's a, a smiley face. That's okay. That would be awesome. We'd love to see you this, um, this Sunday and uh, at 10 a.m. in Wilsonton. Encouraged to encourage you to make it there. If you want to give to... Breakthrough Center, that is possible with modern technology. That is possible and actually not, not that difficult. So I will put a link now in the comments that just goes to the, to the website and you can follow the links there and give. And God bless you for doing that. There you go. <laughs> People are saying, Tina says hello to you. Oh, hello. Thank you for watching, Dr. Wayne. We love you. Awesome. All right. Well, hope to see you tomorrow around 5.30, and that would be awesome. God bless you heaps. Let's continue to pray for those that are in authority in this nation. Believe that it will become an increasingly favorable time politically to to preach the gospel why not let's believe for that let's pray for that in jesus name love you all see you